Brian Scott. Thanks for being on Radiant Creators today. Now, how do I even describe, how do I really even introduce you? You're one of those characters who is doing so much that you make it really hard to do an intro for. So <laughs> I'm going to have you do a slight intro for yourself just because you made it difficult. <laughs> Just, uh, just I host a, I'm a podcast host. You could call me that a writer podcast host. There you go. Yeah, you really are a writer podcast host. And I would say maybe a multidimensional writer podcast host. Right. Yeah. Well. And you are recently an author. How long has your um, book been out? And we have, we happen to have it right here. Yeah, it's, I think it's been about a year now. About it's a, a good year. question. Yeah, it's been out for a little while, and you can see we've got you know marks in it and such. Well, I'm honored to be on your bookshelf. You, you don't know, I'm a, I love books, so I'm mm -hmm. I I have uh, thousands of them in my house just like that. So it was exciting to have a book and and be on um, other people's bookshelves because I know the process. And, and and if you find a good book, it's a wonderful thing. And I was trying to make that book one of those books that you find that maybe can help out. Yeah, and so. Your path, I would say your, I'm going to call it your spiritual path. I guess mm -hmm. you've always been on it, but I'll just, you know, we have to use some kind of a pointer. So I'm going to say right. your spiritual path, your expansive path that started in a very unique way. And for people who are listening to this, I'm just going to, hey, you know, while you're listening, I'm going to point you to uh, therealityrevolution.com. That's a great place to find out about Brian while we're chatting and also Advanced Success Institute. So either one of those, check those out. And uh, if you want to peruse while we're talking, but um, your path began in a unique way that you mentioned right. in the book. And was that really the beginning of, well, I'll let you tell that story, but yeah. what was that the beginning? How long have things been going on before that as far as your spiritual path? And then that moment, was that the beginning or was that an acceleration? That was definitely an acceleration. I've been for a very long time on a long and continuous path, but had struggled deeply. And uh, so th at the beginning, you know, I just was at lost uh, my wife and had to move out, was living alone. I, I was drinking too much. My business was struggling. I had to work like 18 hours a day. I couldn't even get eight hours of sleep because I was working all on my own business. And it, it felt hopeless and really a dark place. And I, and I let those thought streams come in and um, wanted to give up. You know, I had a couple of kids that would, thank God I had kids. They, they gave me a reason to keep going. Uh, and then I started, really trying to shift this mindset and go within my own consciousness and and change that be learning how to fundamentally change my consciousness and my feelings at will and you know i had studied neurolinguistic programming in college and wrote my master's thesis on that so uh, I'm, I'm a hypnotist i'm aware of how the mind works so i'm coming at it from another level i know something's wrong with me and so I'm still in the wallows of all this terrible thing. So I made it a, the only way I could change. Nobody was coming to help me. There's no way I could get out of this. Uh, you know, the only way I could change was to go within, change my thoughts and myself. And so, you know, I took advantage of the situation I was in alone in this house, struggling and said, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop drinking and I'm going to start meditating. And it went on in this long period, got better and better at it, developed this energy routine. And then my life changed and these amazing things started happening. And that's when the incident I talk about the book happens. Uh, at, there's something that happens. And so the story I talk about in the book, this happens, uh, I'm a big Bronco fan. You know, your team, you, you root for your team. When your team makes the Super Bowl, you're gonna watch TV all night, right? So the Broncos were in the Super Bowl. And so I'm laying on my couch, just flipping through ESPN and all the channels just to hear what they say after my team, because my team might never win another Super Bowl. If anybody out there is a football fan, you know how it is, your team wins, right? I mean, it's kind of silly now when I look at it, but uh, my, I lived in the back, my yard was behind a park and, and enter the back, my house through the back through two different doors. One was sort of uh, going into my bedroom. One was going into the living room and they were both these glass sliding doors. And I, uh, you know, got up kind of like four in the morning and I noticed the door. First of all, I, I, something woke me up. It was unusual. I was either laying on the couch. Or I was in that middle area where I'm watching kind of, you know, but I, you know, 
So then I look and, and the doors open. I have a cat in my house and I, you know, I don't want to get my, let my cat escape. And so my first thought is, Oh my God, I, I was been so into this football game and watching all this stuff that um, I, I just let the door open. And so I walk up to the door, looking around for my cat, not noticing. And then I look up and there's this, this kid in, in a hoodie, just standing there pointing a gun at me. And so in that moment, I had a variety of options, but I just had this huge calmness and stillness come down, a feeling of like I was meditating. It was very unusual in that moment because I should have been scared. My heart should have leapt. I should have freaked out, but I just turned and shut the door and it was, the, they were having problems with the door that might've woken me up because it was kind of, you know, greasy a little. Um, so I, I kind of forced it shut and started running away. Uh, and I hear the gunshot and it was a, it was a 22. So it wasn't like in the movies. It wasn't a boom. It was a pop. And then it, it, it time is going so slow. It's a double pane glass and I can hear the bullet hit the first pane. And I can hear the, the slow crackling of the glass. And then I can hear the bullet going through and then hitting the second pane of glass. And then I can, and I'm running and I, I feel something hit my back. And I'm, I, I think I'm probably hit by something, but it, it, you know, just a bump. I run to the other room and there's someone else in there and they're shooting at me. And I'm in a dream sequence where these, I see the bullets going by. I feel fine at all along. I run to my uh, garage and, you know, call the police and they had run off. Um, fortunately, nobody got hurt they ended up having to go to jail, but you know, I've forgiven them. It was hard for me and it was a, 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 a spiritual process, but uh, I should be dead. The bullet had bounced off my back. And you know, some people think a heavier gun, a lighter gun like that will do major damage when it goes into, a, if it enters the body, cause it, it'll zigzag around. And so I, I was incredibly lucky. Uh, I had been exploring prior to this, you know, shifting my reality, really major, intense, energetic shifts of my reality. And um, following this incident, it felt like I had shifted into another reality. And I started to see evidence around me that, you know, buildings that weren't there and a whole variety of people contacting me I never had talked to that said I talked to them, you know. Um, obviously, uh, I thought to myself, I got some sort of PTSD or some disorder, something, this is related to the event. And, you know, the dad in me, the scientist in me is saying something's wrong. I, you know, I contact, you know, a doctor, talk to, you know, a psychiatrist, and they say that nothing's wrong with me. Um, but I'm, I'm really questioning my own sanity at this point, because I'm, objects are missing in my house. <laughs> and uh, so things are showing up that I had never seen before. And, uh, so, you know, I started to really test and experiment with this idea that I had actually entered into another universe. I had, of course, heard people talk about this and had been exploring it in reality, trans surfing and with Frederick Dotson and Cynthia Sue Larson's book on quantum jumping, Bert Goldman wrote a book on quantum jumping well, and they all explored this idea using your consciousness to jump into another reality, which is what I was trying to do, I was in a really tough place before, and I had experimented with these things, and I had found love, my business got better, I didn't have to work anymore, I stopped drinking, and I, these were instantaneous shifts in my reality that were so powerful, and so I'm, perhaps my consciousness was at a point, I mean, I even afterwards went back and tried to go back in time to wake myself up. And, and theorized that I had actually gone through some sort of time loop where I went and protected myself and guided myself during the event. But it was clearly something time-oriented, reality-oriented had occurred to me. And so I went on this long journey of trying to discover what had happened to me. And in the process, the book come, is created because I basically document all the different, you know, studies on realities and parallel realities. I talk about physics. I, I, I talk to a number of physicists and I just, I explore this possibility, the idea that I had been into and explored other realities and, and have, have tried to further expand that on my channel since the book has been published with meditations and techniques and an elaboration of how this might be possible and how there's an actual multidimensional shift that's occurring 
on the planet where we are going into a for certain form of multidimensional consciousness that uh, really changes the way that you look at the world and it changes the, what you believe and understand. The idea that two things that contradict can be true at the same time really starts to shift your, your beliefs. And so it, it, in my process of discovering this and sharing it with my readers and, and particularly my listeners and people that watch my YouTube channel, Brian Scott, uh, we've really kind of started to, as a group, um, come to a better understanding of this process. And it's an ongoing, every single day sort of, um, classroom setting, which I'm doing for my podcast and in this discussion. So the book's sort of the beginning of that, this idea where, hey, did this happen to me? Is it true? And I go out and interview all these people. And, and so that, that's kind of where the book came from. And, and there was an acceleration because, you know, I wake up every day and i'm super happy to be alive i shouldn't be so every breath is an is a bonus and it's in and, and i realized this shift was even bigger than what i'd experienced before i'd seen my reality change but i hadn't gone deep to the purpose of my life and so when that awoke within me this idea that if i could just share this feeling i have in this moment knowing that i should be dead having seen my whole life and just give it to you as a pill so you don't have to have a near-death experience if i could just do something and so that has been my commitment um because in that moment i kind of looked back and said you know I, i've done all this stuff but what have i really done i haven't have i really helped anybody out have i done anything that i i'm proud of how are my kids going to look at me when they look back and say oh you know, they, what are they going to say about me? What are my friends? And, and I started to think, what do, what do I really want to do with the time? I, can I change the world? Can I, can I be of service? Can, can, I, can I do something in, in, in now that I'm in this new world? And so that became my guiding um, goal. How can I use what I've learned and the benefits that I've learned? And I started to figure out um, this lesson resonated with a lot of people. A lot of people have that same mission. And once they awaken, and transform the, their own selves to what their own purpose is, and, and they start to help others. It's the, this in all combinations. So it's really been a, a, a shining star for me, a guiding star that I've been following is that, hey, I want everybody in the world to feel what I felt that next day when I was so grateful to be alive. And th th this huge feeling of love and joy and happiness and, and all the things that I went through. And so that's that's been my mission since that happened. And you were struggling before that, uh, that incident. And then that was yeah. so definitely a big acceleration. And that's quite an incident to have. And it's always amazing how time slows down like that, where you can actually hear the millisecond difference between, yeah. you know, a 22 round going, going through two different panes of glass, which are right next to each other. And... Mm -hmm. Um, is something that it reminds me of with what you're saying is, and I think something that you really are helping people do is there's so many people right now. Now, after you have that awakening experience, that's one thing. And, and this happens mm -hmm. to people who've had that, um, but especially, well, people who have not and people who have, it, there's this desire so many people have that if they could just be okay all of the time, life would be so much better for them. And I think you're definitely helping people do that because I would say a vast majority of people are not okay most of the time. They're in yeah. negative, you know, uh, a negative state. They're in a negative mindset. They're living from negative yeah. assumptions. So they're basically, as we could say, a pendulum back and forth within themselves. Yeah. I'm okay, I'm not okay. I'm really okay, no, I'm not okay. I'm not okay, I'm still not okay. Now I'm okay for a day, now I'm crappy. <laughs> and most right. people are like, if they could just stop that yeah. pendulum and just at least be okay all of the time, they would be, uh, it would be like the greatest blessing that ever happened to them. So do you think you're helping people get to that place? I mean, you're helping people in a lot of ways, but I think that you're right. definitely helping people get okay enough of the time to begin truly having that acceleration. Yeah, it's it's certainly something I hope so. Uh, you know, if I if the, the first lesson that my mentor that really helped me was I need to take responsibility for everything in my life and really understanding, you know, there's a dark side to reality creation and the law of attraction. 
that we don't talk about. Oh, it's an exciting idea that what we think in our mind creates reality. But you look around the world, obviously, that's not working out for a lot of people because the mind you know, everything is created. The dark, your fears are created. Your, in, in, as we study this and examine it, it's really um, what we think in, in connection to our feelings at the same time that we create. So uh, if we don't know about this and we're walking around ignorant to it, because a lot of people, it's just simply a not, an, an unawareness. If we don't know about this and we let our minds just run through some of these amazing scenarios and worry and fear and compare and all those old ways of thinking, which we have been bred and patterned and habituated into from the time that we're born, we're born and taught this way by our parents because it's the way our parents thought, you know, they didn't realize that reality creation, it's just something that's really happening. So uh, what do I, you know, a lot of people are coming to me, they, they realize, they, they've become aware, they finally put their finger on it. My reality is being created by me. What do I do now? And so the, one of the big things to learn is you're, you're not going to be positive all the time. Uh, the, the way the human mind works, you attract thought streams. So you become aware of how you can pattern your thoughts. You become aware of how you can also eliminate when you acknowledge and you get a negative thought and you um, do the opposite of affirm it. You deny it and you, you start to understand that at some moments, it's pr particularly a lot of people really struggle when they have bad things happen in their life. And that's where we really create a reality because there are very emotional moments. For instance, I always use this as an example, but it's an easy one. You're driving on the highway, you get a flat tire. Man, this is frustrating. You got to get to the appointment. It's so, and I'm going to go get, I'm going to have to go get the tire replaced. And I got, I got a bit, I'm, you know, all this stuff. So you instantly react. Oh, my life's terrible. I got to go get the flat tires. And, the, and then you think, and then you start inviting these thoughts. And if you start to program yourself like, like, like in karate, if somebody starts to punch you and you, you block automatically without thinking and you make it part of your subconscious to think in those moments, everything is working to my advantage. It doesn't matter what happens. You realize that flat tire may have stopped you from being in a tragic accident somewhere down the road. And you start imagining that you're protected, that you're safe. And when you have weird things happen, you're like, oh, okay, I guess this is part of the process. Because I, for me to go from point A to point B, some bad stuff might happen. But when you start looking back on your life and the bad stuff that happens, you realize it was all to your benefit and you really wouldn't want to change it. That you come out the other side, there's a reason for bad stuff that happens. So you, you start to control your, and as you get better and better, you deny those negative thoughts. You start affirming your positive thoughts. You start focusing on thoughts that you want to create, you start learning how to visualize, your mind will do that less and less and less, becoming the, pro the reality projector. You're creating, you're either receiving and just reacting like the moon, you know, light that hits you and you're just shining your light, but it's really just the, someone else's light, which is most of the earth is people that are re just reflecting what they see around them. And that's basically it. Or you become like the sun, where you choose to shine your own light and it doesn't matter what anybody thinks of you, the light's gonna be there and it's gonna change. And there's a sort of shift that goes beyond just thinking positively and controlling our thoughts and everything is okay. And when we do that shift, that's when everything is okay all the time, no matter what, because there's a pattern that we start to create. That's been the big shift I've found with people that I've worked with and, and that share the channel. Yeah, I tend to have that same practice where I will say, you know, everything is good. No matter what happens, it's good. That's good. It's good. Because right. here's the thing. If you, when the, the individual begins to have their own, now I'm going to do a little bit of, of, of a Neville, uh, Neville nomenclature here. And I will, people who are not right. familiar with Neville, um, you did an amazing reading of this book, um, The, uh, the mm -hmm. Power of Awareness by Neville. I mean, an amazing reading and a little bit of expanded commentary on it. And so if a person's not really familiar with Neville, I'll link to that in the show notes and you will be after listening to that. It's an amazing, amazing reading mm -hmm. of his book. So it appears that we are, I say, when we begin to have our own states, as you know, Neville would basically say, a state is a, you can call it an affirmation, but really it, it's the idea of saying, this is something that I desire. And he was in a lecture, he was very cool where he said, where do you think the urge came from? Mm -hmm. You know, ultimately it comes from, from God, the creative potential of the universe, mm -hmm. which is you. So 
it's an interesting thing where he once said, everyone, you know, once you have your state, you have your desire, you have this vision of it, then the whole world, there's an amazing quote. He actually mm-hmm. said, um, he said, and I, I don't know where this is from. It is, of course, Neville. I forget where I came, where I got it, but it says that uh, we are all actually one. So if I stand here now and lose myself in an imaginal act, I am influencing the entire world, influencing everyone who can be used to aid me in the objectification of what I am imagining. Mm-hmm. When we have impressed our desire state, so basically, yeah. So once an individual is using the law of attraction or using the power of assumption, like Neville mentions, then all of a mm-hmm. sudden you're on this track, you're manifesting, you know that you're in control. You can't see it exactly how it's going to happen, but you know, you're going in that direction. So that, that changes everything. And you're right. You're more okay all the time because whatever happens, you go, Oh, this is good. This flat tire, what a pain in the ass, but it's perfect. <laughs> right. I, it, it's almost like I have no adversaries in this world because I'm right. creating what I want and I've kind of let go. I've surrendered how that's going to happen. And since I've done that, this flat tire, perfect. I'll journal mm-hmm. this today. I got a flat tire right? <laughs> and it was wonderful. <laughs> the amazing thing about Neville is that I really discovered Neville. I had read The Feeling is a Secret before, but um, that was pretty much all I had really read when I wrote the book. So you're, you're seeing on my channel after I wrote the book, my, me discovering Neville going, he's talking about what happened to me. Uh, he, and for he was, uh, when you really go deep on Neville, he was an actor, he was a dancer. So when he's talking about states, he's really sort of talking about you're playing a role. When you play the role, you're in this role and it, and it means everything in the way, in just a single thought, it's the way that you would think. So if you're, if you're a, a millionaire, there's, there's thoughts that you would have, things that would bother you, things that you would like, there's ways that you would think about everything. And it's the way you feel in your body in your stomach, in your heart, the way you breathe, the way your voice is. And he really took it to the next level, explaining that if you're in the moment, believing that it's happening now in the moment, that all those tones of reality are occurring, uh, which is what I was kind of doing. And I realized that he was explaining this idea that if you do that, it's sort of like you enter into another reality. You are moving and shifting, even though it's not already there. It's, it, you know, talks about in the Bible, believe it and it will happen. You believe it beforehand. And uh, it's a very basic and simple idea, but the way that Neville teaches it is fundamentally at another level. He's talking, you know, and he has a, for some people are very turned off when they first read Neville. Usually it's very similar. People say, yeah, yeah, I was turned off because it's, it comes off very biblically at first and then you read you you discover later it's really not biblical he's speaking against a lot of the biblical interpretations that we see today uh so when you kind of go to the next level he's explaining and so he explains what you know somebody i had you know the bible was just kind of ridiculous to me but then he awoke my understanding of the bible in a new and brand new way and a variety of other things his techniques are amazing he discusses a variety of techniques for reality creation uh going astral travel in your dream state into a parallel reality in one of his um in one of his lectures discussing it he's really good at about talking about changing the reality of other people in, in, and like as you the the comment that you had read where he's explaining we're all one that we're one that god is everyone we are all god at the same time this sort of it's very for some people that, that sounds as like a scary idea but um our, my God is 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 much bigger, and, and my God is not as big as one person. My God is this infinite, and uh, so we takes form in all of us. And so when we come into sort of a touch that there's a portion of us that is one, that means when I look at you and I talk to you, I'm talking to myself. And 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 so when you really get used to, this, you start to see, you start to see that I see you in me, and you and and, and it, so when you start to really imagine. Uh, your imagination and, and when you come to this level of connection and unity then when your imagination it affects the whole world it affects the whole world you're part of the play and you're taking a role an active role in the play and so he emphasized you know it it really is powerful when you start doing it for other people as the book of job when job job's struggling and suddenly he's thinking imagining for his friends and and then you know, praying for his friends and everything turns out okay for him 
And so he has some amazing, you know, going into actually imagining you're somebody else in their body, driving that car that you want them to drive uh, or hearing their voice saying, I'm so happy about this new job. And so when you start to experiment with some of the stuff that Neville does, Neville is always saying, don't take my word for it. <laughs> you don't, I, I realize how crazy I sound. Go and try it, test it yourself. And so that's the amazing part of Neville is these are things that you can go test out. And I really think he was at the forefront. He even explains in, in some of his, in one of his books, I believe it's out of this world, this kind of going along with the same theory of parallel realities. <clears throat> As he says, there's worlds within worlds within worlds. And so um, I really thought, you know, Neville was really one of those at the forefront of this idea and really even taking and, and the biblical message, you know, that God prepares, God has a mansion with many rooms. So it, it, this allowed me to bridge that, that, that biblical understanding and, and realize the Bible is telling us how to travel through parallel realities. <laughs> Right. Yeah. And he was here at a different time, of course. I mean, I know he died of in course, 70, yeah. 72, I believe is when he, you know, well, sort of, he changed whatever I want to call it death. But right. um, oh, and also Neville had amazing views on on death as we see it. I always loved yeah. his, taught, his idea of you're born once um, the hard way. And then after that, you just basically you switch to another around a 20 year old body and you keep right. going and most people <laughs> don't know that that has taken place only you might say the adept at a certain point is going to realize that and when neville talked about so matter of factly how he would be talking to somebody who who he'd been to their funeral and now they were back and he was talking right. to them and they didn't know that they had died and that always really um he doesn't go into that in incredible detail, but, which many things, I mean, he can only kind of say so right. much while he was here, but that really struck me where he said, you might go back a thousand years, you might go forward 2000 years, wherever it, wherever it most right. suits your, your growth, because there's like the promise, we all return to God. That's the whole idea of it. You were created to return to God, basically. Um, right. And then before, like, once you really awaken, you'll be a messenger for a while, then you'll return, you know? And I guess that that's the phase he was in. And so you're like, right. And it really strikes me because you think about how many people have, have said, yes, you know, I'll contact you after I die. People, people want that contact. But then listening to Neville, I realized most people don't know they died to contact you and they wouldn't know how if they don't did. know they're dead. Yes. It's a really fascinating concept. Yeah, it's a really Neville's concept of the afterlife. I could sit and talk about it with you for 30 minutes, still not totally understand it. Of the, it, it he talks about the 6,000 years. So implication that we're reliving, that we only are a child once. When you think of that concept, then you realize, wow, my childhood is just a memory. It really is a memory. Even though I know I physically remember all those details, but it's just a memory. You could you could have had a childhood and not and, and move into another body and not know it. So um, he doesn't necessarily say it's happening in this reality, but then sometimes implies that it is. So I don't know. Like, is it happening in a time loop, so that we're going back to when we're twenty in this time, or you know, or, or maybe in another time? So there, there there's some real questions I still have. Um, perhaps we're reliving the time loop over and over until we have the promise where we go through this shift and this the promise discussions it's interesting when you look at the theory of uh, the, the, the history of neville um he's talking about imagination and, and people are loving it and people are coming and packing the house but when he starts talking about the promise you know people started to bail because he was going he, it sounded a little bit crazy from the lecture um from the podium saying stuff this dream that you're holding a baby and, and then the wind comes upon you and and you meet God and you embrace him. He's the God of love and the dove comes down and he's um, talking about these things that it, it's so on a different level. And so at, over time, my best understanding of that is that we come, we have experiences that are similar to what Jesus had and we awaken as the Christ within this reality yes. or some reality at some point in the future where we are then merged with God and still remaining individualized, move on to a new earth or another level. And so I've even found links to what I believe Neville's talking about. You know, we're, it's the, it's a process of awakening, at least that he was documenting with at that time. So it's super fascinating. And, and it, yeah, it makes sense. Why do we have to become, go back and become kids over and over if we're reincarnating, 
right? Yes. Wouldn't it be a lot easier if we just did that? Because, you know, kind of repetitive and we'd get old, right? So, <laughs> yeah. But, um, I also have that thought because of what happened to me. I find it fascinating. Am I in an, one of those realities that he's talking about? Do oh, yeah, I not it, know that I'm dead? Right. Yes. When they shot at me, maybe I am dead. And this is what, you know, this is the next part of the play that God has me on, which. And, and um, you mentioned you know. <laughs> things were different. Yeah. You mentioned things were different after that. And that's right. one thing I was, something I've realized recently is now you Neville talked about states and definitely if people listen to you like say if they're not familiar with neville uh, i'll link to the show notes and, and this is an amazing book that you did a reading of and an expansion on and, and i think they'll understand states well enough then um, but i believe and this is something that has come to me is i think that states can kind of fall upon us in a way so in a yes. sense we think that oh i'm going to envision this state so we tend to be reactionary we say well i have something mm -hmm. i want and that's fine. That's good. Like Neville said, sure, of course, you know, now you have that, you create that state, you feel it, um, you're, you're there, it exists. And this is, this is unique for people who are familiar with like Abraham and law of attraction and other methodologies. <clears throat> this is, this is a bit different. It's a law of assumption. So that state exists, it exists now, and then boom, you'll snap into it. But I've kind of found that, you know, you can also just, here's the thing, as he mentioned, we're all willing well, are you not willing? Uh, well, we're all basically servants of, of no, I don't know how to put this. We're all knowing and unknowing servants of states. You know, like, like, right. in, like absolutely. We are helping states be created for others. And then also, of course, we are creating them for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And to me, an experience that I've had recently is where your state just changes. Right. And, and that can be incredibly disorienting because see we're, we're used to 3d you know but all mm -hmm. of a sudden you have this state change boom and reality is different and like you're saying all of a sudden that that next day reality is different mm -hmm. and that can it's, be a bit shocking it really can be um I, I believe there's a sort of portion of our subconscious or higher self that's trying to protect us from these big changes until we kind of become aware of it. You know, if you're fearful of the big change, you're going to change your life so you don't see those big state changes that happen. Um, so a lot of what we're going through is, and it's okay to have these states of change. And also learning that a state change, which we might've experienced in the past, might've taken a, a week or a couple of days, you go, but now it's an instantaneous state change and an instantaneous reality change. And so we have to come to grips with this. We have to be okay and embrace it. Because if we become the, the, the projector of our reality, we can change our state at any time. But yes, there's a period of time where you experience these new states uh, and they come at you like lightning you know, out of nowhere. And so there's a period I think that we go through where we learn to process this and uh, become discriminatory with the states that we enter. And if we enter into a state that we don't want, we create anchors and ways for us to change our own states, which is a, a way of learning how to do meditation or, uh, you know, some people are really good. They can just do a simple like pinch their, their thumb a certain way. They program themselves through repeated activities, songs, exercises, so they can instantly change their state. There's some really good, you know, Tony Robbins is the master of that. If you read his stuff, he's always talking about state change. And so I think there's technologies that are becoming available as in, um, you know, neuro-linguistic technologies, technologies of communication, technologies of meditation that allow us to change our states. And we will get better and better at that. And I, what I recommend anybody watching or listening to this is what you want to do is embrace this. Don't be afraid of state changes. Be okay with it. There is a multidimensional consciousness that is available to you. And there is a portion of you that will stop you from experiencing that stuff. And you won't get, be able to, you, you can stop the, the state changes. But when you end up living, you know, in in fear, and you 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 go back into your shell, into your room, not leaving, uh, uh, trying to avoid these state changes. That's not the thing. You want to embrace it. You want to become aware of it. You want to explore. You want to be a, an astronaut going into these new spaces and new realities and state changes, knowing that you can change your state at any time. And when we have a state that we've, you know, created ourselves, here's something um, 
So it's great that we can talk about Neville. So definitely, you know, we, we focus on the, the uh, your story, how you come to be. And also mm -hmm. we'll definitely at the end, we'll, you know, go into where can people get a hold of you? What, what are some of the offerings that you have? You do have some, you know, amazing stuff out there. Definitely get the book. It's awesome. Um, listen to Brian's YouTube channel, especially the Neville stuff. But there's so much fantastic stuff that you have on there. And you are really a content creating machine. So one thing I wanted to touch on <laughs> is what is a day in the life like for you? Because once an individual gets familiar with your YouTube channel, you are a content creating machine and it's all very high quality content. So you are reading, you are absorbing, you are uh, yeah, creating content for people, like you're reading the, the Neville lectures and expanding on them and such. I mean, what does your day look like? I, I'm just curious because I, I'm amazed at the amount of content and the quality of it that, that, that you kick out. Um, are, are you like a like like a very disciplined monk or do no, you like- No, <laughs> I, I find, I, you know, I've heard this multiple times and I find it hilarious because, um, you know, I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, uh, Tim Ferriss's four hour work week. And I am, you know, prior to this, before I started my channel, my book, I'm embracing that, you know, I'm creating the book so I can create a funnel. And I still have created my life around this idea. Um, I'll get up and record an episode. If I'm, if I'm really having fun, I'll record a couple of episodes and I'll do that for two or three days during the week. And then I take the rest of the week off. And, um, you know, it's the, the, the episodes come to me pretty quickly. I have a lot of people that help me with the sound and the video. So I have a system down where I, I record it. I send to somebody else. I have other people taking care of it. And so um, it's fun. I am still having a lot of fun. It's not difficult. And so, uh, you know, as long as I'm having fun with it and it's fun, um, you know, I'm doing it all the time. I spend majority of my time painting. It's not really doing that. This is, this is sort of feels like, a fun hobby to me, but really the thing I really enjoy and the reason I put a lot of time into it, it's an opportunity for me to be of service to help people out without leaving my house. You know, and you know, I, I don't have to leave my house right now, but I can help people out. I can I can send a meditation, I can discuss this, I can, you know, we can talk about different things that are struggle people are struggling with. And and so that's exciting to me. And I, in any time opportunity to be of service is, and I'm really honored and grateful to have that opportunity with my channel. Enough people have subscribed to it that I, you know, I have regular people that are watching and viewing it. And man, I never thought that would happen for me. So it's super exciting. I, you know, I still listen to my stuff a lot and I don't think it's me. I'm listening to it in the same way. Oh, that's, that's kind of interesting. And a lot of the episodes that I'm doing uh, I, I don't remember when I'm doing it. Like a, it's, it's like a channeling, like something's coming through me. And uh, so I, you'll notice I, I read a lot of different authors and it's kind of because I've gotten to the point, if I read an author enough, a couple of times, I start to communicate with them. They're in my presence. There feels like they're talking to me and, and guiding me and telling me what to do. And I, there's something about that that's super exciting. E even when Neville chastises me, if I read stuff wrong, I, feel, I hear is okay, okay, I'll go back and correct it. <laughs> I am excited about that. That, you know, as I've done that, that sort of awareness, it feels like when I'm really delving into an author, I'm opening up the memories of that person. As I do more meditation and try to contact to the universal mind and, and stuff, that's when these books become like an open doorway to, to much more when I'm listening or reading about someone. It's like there's a portion of my mind that opens up there who they were and what kind of experiences they had. And I learned so much. I wish I could even document it. It's all just trifles in my imagination. But that's the reason it's so fascinating for me. You know, I, don't, I, I never look at it as work. So. That's amazing. And that's when it's really perfect. Well, <laughs> right. I love that you, uh, you have that communication with, with the authors because that's something that everyone can cultivate and it's and it's so incredibly useful because mm -hmm. like Neville you know his body is not around right now since 1972 but you could you can still uh, you can still talk to him you know and, and right. these things are very very important because I think that uh, many people who listen to Neville are sort of like man I just wish he was still here so I could ask him questions etc and well he is still here he's still available yeah and so yeah, and that, that's an amazing thing because I think that, uh, you know, if, if I could, you know, do a session with Neville, ask him some questions one to one, I'd be very, very happy. But, uh, yeah. you know, but of course, the truth is, you can. <laughs> well, Neville you can talks do about doing it. He was a big fan of William Blake. 
Yes. And so he says that he has, you know, he yes. met Millie and Blake. He says he met Paul from the Bible and, yes. and not, not just talks about him, but acts as if he had real conversations with these people. <laughs> oh yeah. And right. There's a certain matter of factness in the way that he states everything that you just, for me personally, I just know it's true. I just yeah, go, there's an authenticity. There's an he authenticity. Wouldn't, it's somebody that truly believed would only only somebody that truly believed would say it just that way. That's mm -hmm. what your ear just knows. It knows if somebody is is lying or or even the words. But there's something about the way he says it that makes it so authentic. That at a minimum, he believes with all of his heart and soul that it is absolutely true. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. It's coming from his heart. And right. something, and, and you know, some people have a conflict with um, Neville and the Bible, and I do understand because a lot of us have a lot of mm -hmm. you know angst towards that, and that's fine. I get it, but. One of the beautiful things I think that if a person processes Neville's work correctly, it, they can create a much better relationship with the Bible itself because they start realizing that, well, okay, if it is a book of truth as Neville is putting forth, we have to realize that that means an individual's place of evolution. I'm going to say an individual's place of awareness, wherever that's at, it's going to talk to them at that level because they can't process it any other way. You know, mm -hmm. so, you know, if one person's thinking, yeah, you know, if only the Knights Templar had killed a few more heathens, the world would be better and they're reading the Bible. <laughs> it's like, it's okay, yeah. great. You know, that's where they're at. And if a person wants to feel that um, God is outside themselves, that's fine because they do. So they can't mm -hmm. fake it. If that's, if that's their belief, then that, that's fine. If so talking to God outside of themselves, that is great. But I really think that I'm just calling it a vision. It's just it's just an intuition, a feeling that right. I have is that we're going to see the Neville work begin to, and I think it has been for quite some time, but I think more and more filter into kind of like, it's going to be in churches. I'm just really surprised there hasn't been a Neville church. I mean, there's like the Unity Church. There's different New Thought churches that have kind mm -hmm. of popped up over the years, but there hasn't been a church that was dedicated to the Neville teachings or something similar where they're not necessarily mentioning Neville, but they're going over this particular form of interpretation. I'm sure it's out there. And I'm sure that after, you know, when, you know, people will comment on this and say that, but I'm just really surprised at that. What's interesting. When I first looked into Neville, he was not on Wikipedia. I don't think he is now. There's enough people that were so furious over the way he was interpreting the Bible. They still are actively yes. going against him and um, marginalizing him and diminishing him. So there is this sort of underlying Christian anti-Neville sentiment. Uh, and and it, he, in his lectures, he would make fun of, you know, Billy Graham and, mm -hmm. and make these comments in certain lectures maybe of the day. Hey, I just saw Billy Graham's comment. And, you know, people don't even know what, what, what Christmas really is, Easter, what, yeah. what Easter really is. Or, and so there was obviously some tension. I find it fascinating. Uh, you know, I would love to know what the real react because this is um he was on live tv on back yes. in the day when TVs were black and white he had a show people do not have there's like no recordings like or one or i know Mitch horowitz has one recording but uh so there was a period of time when level was on and tv back in the day isn't like now where there's netflix and all these channels right there was like five channels so Neville was on one of the five channels on TV. People were, and he was getting up and just speaking to the camera. So you really wonder after all that, what happened? Why there hasn't been, you know, there's the, there's the, the YouTube presence where people talk about Neville and there's some famous authors like Mitch Horowitz that have discussed him, but really we haven't seen, uh, it's sort of underlying or people are afraid to talk about it. You, you know, it's, it's different, right? Yeah. He breaks so, all the rules. And, and when he was, he breaks all the rules, all the rules. And I say when he was, all, well, I'll just, you know, finish up one thought is where I don't see any contradiction in anything he's saying, like in the Bible. So if an individual is like, well, God no. is outside, if God is outside of myself, like that's their thing, they have to pray to the Lord. They have to pray like it's outside of themselves. Right well what's the contradiction you know like like no one gets to say that uh, epistemology is done you know it's like that there's that a, was neville's a, version with my own wife i've noticed when i try to introduce neville to my wife who uh comes from a very christian background mm -hmm. it's that it's the i am god is yes. really hard oh yeah oh 
He hung up there. We'll see if you come back. It's it's bred into you. Jesus, make the art. Does not your Bible say you are gods? Right? Did I freeze on you? You still got me? Yeah, you, free, you froze me for a second. It, I think it's okay. all caught up Sorry now, though. It. Yeah, it, it, it just buffered, but I think it, it, it was perfect. Okay. You know, it was, yeah, it's because people really have a lot of angst with that. So they're... <laughs> Somebody so a, that one in particular. And somebody so hit Neville the button. always makes the argument. He points to the Bible. He points to the phrase in the Bible when Moses asked God, what's your name? He says, I am. He And so that's the thing that a lot of people really struggle because because if they're coming from that Christian background, they're actually sinning and could go to hell for that belief. There are churches that say you are not God. And if you believe or say that you are God, then that's a sin. And so there's the, the, there's a for people that are really deep within that and they're very ritual and they believe that uh, they there's that deep part of them that's been programmed to say I can't say that so it so it's an uphill battle and we'll always be encountering that you know until people understand a little bit because you know the Hindu religion hey they all yeah I'm God no big deal right you know and Watts talks about that but the, but here it's it's a big deal it's a Western sort of mentality particularly um that is yeah. afraid of that sentiment yeah and i think i think it will eventually I, I believe it'll smooth out in time because you know there really is no contradiction it's just a matter of how you see things so god's outside of myself i am god okay either way we can all listen up a little bit you know i think it can be fun to go to the traditional church it's beautiful it's fun let's let, let's do this whole thing where god's out yeah. there okay i can do that too it's fun you know uh, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think we'll all get along in time. Well, uh, with, with Neville, I think it's the same as his, um, his an early mentor, Abdullah, you know, they talks about one of, one of his favorite lectures is where he talks about Abdullah and uh, you are in Barbados. Have you heard that one? Right, right. Oh, of course. Yes. Like, like where he really got introduced into the state, you know, you are in Barbados. And that, that right. I can, I've listened to that so many times because it's just really ultimately the essence of his teachings is all right it's there. such a simple, powerful way. When you go to bed, go to sleep in the place that you want to be. So, he, yes. you know, he, he does it for people that are wanting to buy new houses, uh, you know, that want to get out of, for in his particular um, case, also the classic one for Neville that in that book, The Power of Awareness, where he's in the military, doesn't yes. want to be in the military. And he imagines he's in his house in New York, you know? And so every time he does this, because this technique is hard. People don't know all the things they need to think about to create a state. They're not master actors, most people aren't. But it's pretty easy to close your eyes and imagine that you're sleeping in a bed in somewhere else. That, that's something that a lot of us can do without a lot of difficulty. And that's why that technique, falling asleep to the wish fulfilled, is so powerful. And, and when, you know, in, in your case, the story is that um, Abdullah had taught him this technique and he wanted to go back to the Barbados, but didn't have the means to do it. And he's, he's concerned. He goes back to Abdullah and, and you know, what's going on. And he, Abdullah refuses to talk to him and says, you're in Barbados. Yes. Right. The idea is that you just go into Abdullah and talking to him and saying what's going on. That's the mistake. The mistake is you go around in your day now and you assume that you're in Barbados. Uh, and, and, and that uh, really reaches to a lot of people because they can, um, you know, some techniques can be pretty hard and it's pretty hard to create a state for people that don't, don't do that kind of thing on a regular basis. Yes. We can fall asleep to this. We can fall asleep and, and you can just access your imagination. If you start doing that, it's a simple way to use the Neville technique to pure success, really powerful. And, you know, when, as we talk about states, um, well, I will touch on you know, very briefly where um, when he was in the military, he did not want to be there. He felt that it, he should, he was drafted, I do believe. So he felt, okay, I should honor that. And he went, but he didn't want to be there. And he was imagining being home. And I would just look at the, the time, the socio, gosh, political reality of that time. The fact that he was able to be honorably discharged just kind of because of a little like technicality is remarkable and ultimately it was it was someone's opinion mm -hmm. someone just had to say okay sure let him out that doesn't happen especially at that time no. so that is an incredibly Never. powerful story and even when he was in, in a dream he saw the uh, thing that had been uh, initially denied it was crossed out and said approved and then the voice said to him 
uh, you know, uh, I, uh, like what I have done is done, do nothing. And then he gets called in, into the uh, uh, commander's office and, you know, he tries to talk him out of leaving the military and he says, nope, I don't wanna be here. And boom, he was gone. So remarkable story, but to create a state. Now, something I've kind of come to, re 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 come to recently is where, you know, really a lot of our, our evolution, our, our personal growth really comes from manifesting. It's something I've got from Neville. And then we should often be kind of happy about it because life doesn't really happen in a plateau. You know, we create and then each state that we create, each new thing we, we are creating is ultimately a purification. It's like the Course in Miracles says, miracles are everyone's right, but purification mm -hmm. is necessary. So um, you get this state, this urge comes to you. And I don't think they're all necessarily from, as we would think of it ourselves. I think, at least for me, I've had states that are inspired, that come to me and you go, hmm, I feel this. Let me feel into that. I like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is outlandish. It's not necessarily something I would have thought I would have wanted, but I'll go with that. Okay, mm -hmm. you know, so states I do believe are truly inspired and something he, I do think touched on, like he, he would mention, where do you think the urge came from? You know, mm -hmm. um, not all states that we desire are our own. Like, even though we are God, they come to us. Um, and I was thinking about how do you know when a state is, uh, when it has been impressed, as, as Neville would put it, on our subconscious. Because many of us go, well, have I, have I truly impressed it on my subconscious? Because it's important, Neville, mm -hmm. towards the end of his life, mentioned to drop it. Don't obsess about it. And Right. I, so, and I, yeah, go ahead. So, yeah, uh, he, he really teaches about this in his lecture, Follow the Sabbath. And mm. re redefines this creation story where God is creating the earth. You're creating your reality, right? And it helps you to understand that on the seventh day, um, God rested as an example of that's how the technique that God used. So you create, you create, you create all the aspects of it, and then you let it go. Uh, and so there is a point when you imagine that you're in the state, you're still imagining. So if you're thinking about that, I'm creating the state, you're not there yet. In my own experience, I've found, you know, when, when you kind of have forgotten that you're creating the state, but you're still in the state. So if I have to think I need to go back into this state, okay, I'm not quite there. But when I get so good at it, that it's sort of, it's automatic. Then I know that the state's created and everything's going to start working. Sometimes that can take a while. There's some stuff that we have. Uh, you might think one thing, but you're, you're still in the other state. So when I am in that state all the time and I let it go to where I forget about it and, and I forget I'm creating it, but I'm still in the state. That's when to me, and I think that's what Neville, you could do it sometimes automatically, very quickly. And then sometimes it takes a little while. You're making a big change that has attached to a lot of different stuff in your past and memories that you have. Oh, right? it is. So. And, to, and, and like we desire the state because it does exist. Ultimately, in, in the multiverse, we right. were drawn to this one. And sometimes I think that state actually draws you. I think it can go either way. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. That's and, a so, great point. and so that state goes, um, there's like a tarot card. I think it's the seven of cups where, you know, one, one cup is shining more than the rest. You know, so all in, in the multiverse, right. all of a sudden, this potential, this state goes, boom, hits you with that laser beam and I'll do it. It sounds good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? No, and, and you're so true. Yeah. Uh, it's like you the first thing if people that are listening watching uh if you have something that you really desire that means that it's that that you actually have it somewhere in all of the different multiverse you might never have it but somewhere you do and there's a part of you yearning to get to that point uh and and frederick dodson makes that comment in his book parallel universes of self that um if you have a desire it means that it there is a reality where it exists and that's what neville is saying too so uh, embrace your desires, embrace them. They are, they are, there's a part of you that, that is telling you that's what you can have. We sometimes desire things that we say in our mind, oh, that's impossible. There's no way that would ever happen for me. It's not true. It will happen. It's, that means if you really want it, it's out there. Some of them, it might be crazy, but it's your, you know, whatever it is.
Oh yeah, and, and for God, for yourself, the I am, there's no order of difficulty. Whether you want a button for an old jacket no. that, that you can't find or you want a castle, makes no difference. There's no order of difficulty mm -hmm. in it. So, And ultimately, when we say it's impossible, if we get inspired by a state, you know, that urge comes to us, that's the creative potential of the universe. That's the creative, creative mm -hmm. potential of God. So that's the expansion. That's really ultimately why we exist. And the beautiful thing about it is that's our, that's our growth. And so the state comes to us wherever it came from. And now we, now we feel it. And I think that there can be a while where we sort of naturalize the state because it comes to us and we don't quite see it yet, you know, and I'll use, um, I know you stopped drinking, but I'm going to use an analogy of wine, no, that's fine. <laughs> you know, so, it, um, no. so imagine you say, you know, I want to, ah, I want a glass of wine and well, what does that mean? Not very much. That state came to you. Well, okay, here, here's some boxed Sutter home or something, you know, whatever. Here's some crappy right. stuff. And that's not it. No, the state is actually something amazing. So it can take us a while to feel that state, to, to truly mm -hmm. understand it. Cause like you're exploring this that has come to you and you go, oh, now I get it. You know, now I'm at the winery and I'm learning about this. You know, because right. let's face it, wine is always better when you learn about it at the winery, when you're doing the tasting. And now you've gone from, I want this wine, this state that kind of found you and you found it. And all of a sudden now it involves so many people and it's right, grand right. and it's everyone's mutual creation. Yet everyone, as you, as you pushed out, it's your mirror. You did create your version of it. And so mm -hmm. it takes us a while to kind of, a, to kind of synchronize with our state. But as we do, I found that you know, the, the idea of when do you drop it and how do you deal with the uh, uh, um, bridge mm -hmm. of, of incidents that Neville talks about. And I found that for me, it's that when the state is created and now you feel it, and I've always kind of felt intuitively, you can feel a state. You can like stick your hand, you can stick your feeling into it and you can feel that state. What is this? I mean, it feels beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so you go, okay, this is it. Now I get it. And now I'm there. Now I see the picture, the, the short animated GIF, you know, <laughs> of, of me in that state boom right. and i and i can do that well at the same time as that arises so do all the negative assumptions the negative beliefs that you have that keep you from that always. and and always and that's why it really is our growth because the thing that happens and what i started doing is so you draw this circle like nipple mentioned it, it it's the sound of the spheres you know, I draw this circle, mm -hmm. that's the state. And then I think, well, what is keeping this from being right now? What are my negative assumptions? What are my negative beliefs? And I write them outside of the state. And then I draw mm -hmm. the little arrow towards the state. And inside, I draw the truth. I, I mean, I, I write the truth. That's great. I love it. Because yeah. only the truth can be in the state. So these things are outside of the state. Now I'm going to, I'm going to focus on and, and, and write that truth in the state. And yeah. now you have the state and you have the truth, the negative assumptions that kept it from being are gone. And once that's done, once you have spent time to know that state, you've gone to the winery, you've learned about the wine, you've tasted it. That is the state. It's wonderful. You remove the negative assumptions that keep it from being manifest right now. Then this is the tricky part. And this messes with me. I'm going to ask your opinion on this. You mm -hmm. get bored of it. You've yeah. created it. It's done there's nothing to obsess about and the mind in this case is absolutely useless it can't figure it out it can't see oh this is a good thing this is a bad thing oh, this is heading towards this is not this is a good sign this is a bad sign and ultimately you know when the state actually begins to happen it's going to freak the mind out in some cases so the mind mm -hmm. goes from i'm going to figure this out and it's going to be a good day or bad day going towards the creation of the state. Well, basically, basically the state is. But then when you begin to actually, when you jump in that, when that happens, when you, when you jump in that cold water of the state, you're there, the mind oftentimes is going to freak because this doesn't, it can't deal yeah. with that much change suddenly. So anyway, that that's my take on really yeah. one, once you atone with that state and that state is, you're bored of it. You're like, I'm going to toss this, plant that seed and let it go because this mind has it's worthless. I give up. <laughs> and that's the state where you actually create the most, the board state, the one that you, when you let it go. Um, but at the same time, there's, it's amazing, you know, you, 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 str you strive, you imagine you, you enter into the state and then you reach a point where you don't even, you kind of, um, it's just part of your reality. And, and that, and that state, you, which you desired so much before, it's, it's really no big deal. 
And so like, you know, Neville says, um, don't rest on your laurels, you know, you're still always creating, you're always creating. And a lot of people will get some initial success or have, and reach a point where they're successful or happy. And then they kind of just forget about it and let go. There is a spiritual a process that occurs as you start to achieve your desires, where your desires become unimportant and it, 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 stuff for yourself is not that important. It's sort of, a, it takes you, you're gonna go through a period where you create all these things and do all these things. And then there are no personal desires anymore because you caught everything that you want, but you still wanna have those feelings and you start to get those feelings outside of yourself, imagining for others in the same way where they have those, those exciting moments. And then it becomes really about imagining for others in my own experience. And there's a process that I think people go through when they begin to imagine for themselves. It's true, because eventually you, you you are that person it's hard to buy for because you've got everything. Right, right. <laughs> exactly. You so it's like, uh, I know, you know. Yeah, what am I going to get you for your birthday? I mean, geez. You've got everything <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that you could ever dream of. It's and if you true. don't have it, you'll just make it. You'll create yeah, it. I'll get yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then it's not about having or getting or owning anything because it's not about that. It's about experiences. It's about relationships. And there's no way that you, the feeling that you get from owning something, you'll never get the feeling of, of, of helping someone out, seeing them go through that same transition where they realize their own power. The feeling that you get, I'm just telling people it, it's a, an amazing feeling and it, it, it's on the same level of anything that you could ever own. Whatever that new car is, that new house, it's still even better. It, it may not seem like it, but it is. Uh, and so there's going to be a point where the whole world is going to shift and it's not about accumulating or owning anything. They're going to really get that feeling, that desire for mm -hmm. helping out others, people or doing other things. And there's going to be a, a shift like the, the axis will change. Everything will change on the earth. It'll be an amazing thing that'll happen. Right. Absolutely. Um, I yeah. see that. And maybe not in my lifetime, but I do see that happening someday as we tune in to this uh, power that we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it has been great talking to you. I've had you for an hour. Yes. So I'll let you get back to your, um, your, your uh, manifestation temple. <laughs> and well, do, uh, me, do me a favor, send me the video. Yes. Um, and after you post it, I'll, I'll post it on my channel. That'd be so great. I can get the word out for your um, podcast. So just send it Dropbox link or something. Okay. That'd be great. I'll send it to you. And um, well, as we sign off, where can people get a hold of you? And what are your offerings right now? Of course, you have your beautiful YouTube channel. There's so much there. A person could spend quite a while catching up on everything that you've posted and you're always creating yeah, just, more. You have your amazing book. So where can people get a hold of you? What are your offers? What are you doing right now? Just the best place to look for me is Brian Scott on YouTube. You can just look up Brian Scott. I'll be the first in the search and then you can find me there. Um, you can, you know, my book, I have a new book coming out, the new earth user manual. It's going to, we're mm -hmm. going to go on the next level of what happens after the reality revolution. And that's what we're going to, so I'm excited about that. Uh, we had the reality con, um, about six months ago, you can find recordings of that in an amazing event with new meditations, uh, that I, I put a link on all my videos and we'll have some new conventions in the future. And we're constantly doing new stuff but I try to put everything out I have on for free. I have 150 meditations for um, that people can try for free. Most of my stuff is just available. Also find it on po anywhere podcasts are available under the reality revolution podcast and um, my website, the reality revolution.com. It's all there, but you know, and, and more is coming every day. Yes. And if you are a reader, of course, get Brian's book, uh, the reality revolution, but also if you are a listener, um, Brian did do an audible version of it and something I always really appreciate. And I think it's so important is when an author reads their own book. I realize some people are not going to do that, but you did it and it adds a personal touch that is just irreplaceable. I think it's the only way to do an audible is read it yourself well, and you did I'm an it. And I think that's junkie. amazing. Yes. I'm one, of, I'm one of those audible junkies that, that has like uh, 7,000 books in my audible, yes. you know, and, and uh, I, you know, 
So I was so excited to to be able to have my own book on Audible because yes. I listened to so many. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I can listen yeah. to it, I listen to it. If I can't, I read it. And that just still creates a crap ton of books. So <laughs> right. it's really important stuff. You know, well, I used to, I, my primary re mode of reading used to be reading. And now it's, you know, listening at three and a half times speed. Yes. I want to listen to it as fast as possible. Yeah. And that's the discipline too. That 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 is a good thing for the brain, for the mind, is to mm -hmm. yeah, get used to listening to at first it's a little odd, but then two times, three times speed, you know, it's just an adjustment. And the next thing you know, you'll be listening to, you know, war and peace in an afternoon. Then you go back and listen <laughs> at normal speed and good lord, they're talking so slow. Yes. When you go back. <laughs> yeah, it's so, so. true. Uh, it's so true. Well. Brian, take care. Uh, it's been great well, talking so to much. you. It was so nice to meet you. Yeah. Good luck, okay? Thank you, you too. Craig. Bye-bye.